right-hand lane where you have a shoulder to get off on, or in the left-hand lane where you where um, you have a shoulder on this side on an interstate. You don't want to ever have yourself closed in to where there is nowhere to go because somebody blows a tire, this guy blows a tire, everything's going to, all these people in this zone are going to be involved in that wreck. Leave yourself a way out so that when your analog brakes kick in, you have somewhere to go. Fractions of a second make a difference. You get three seconds to be in a wreck. Three, beginning to end. That's all you get. You need to be alert. It takes you four seconds to send a text. Four seconds. Think about riding down the road and somebody comes up and covers your eyes for four seconds. You can't do it. You cannot text and drive. You have three seconds to be in a wreck. You need to be alert and you need to be paying attention and you need to have your eyes on the road and following the path of travel. Never take your eyes off the road for more than one second glance. Let me talk to you about the two second rule. You need to create a safety zone in front of your car and behind your car. In fact, it's called the danger zone because it that area is the area that it takes you to stop your car. We talked about stopping distances. Your stopping distances, if you will recall, is divided into three different parts. It's your perception time, your reaction time, and then your stopping distance. The average perception time, which means the time that you realize you have to stop, which should be any time you see something red in front of you, is about three-fourths of a second. The average reaction time, which is the time it takes you for, to go from the accelerator to the brake, which should be quicker if you have your foot positioned the way I taught you, is about three-fourths of a second. And then you have your stopping distance, with, which varies with different road conditions, tires conditions, brakes, and the things that we are talked about when we talk about your st stopping distance, speed being the biggest factor. Because speed is the biggest factor in your stopping distance, at any speed, you need to be at least two seconds back because it takes you a second and a half to even begin to stop, to realize you have to stop and begin to stop. You're a second and a half. So at any speed, you have to be at least two seconds back. As you increase your speed from 35 miles an hour and above, as you increase your speed, 10 miles an hour, you need to increase your stopping, your following distance one second. So at 45 miles an hour, you're going to be three seconds back. At 55 miles an hour, you're going to be four seconds back. At 65 to 70 miles an hour, you're going to be four to five seconds back. In inclement weather, when you have rain or you have snow or your roadways are wet, you need to be six seconds back, even in gravel. Anytime you're going to lose your traction, you need to be six seconds back, especially at the very beginning of the rain and the very beginning of the snow. That's the most dangerous time for you because when the oils and the gases, uh, the gas lean on the road mixes with the moisture, it's going to make a slick surface where you can hydroplane or take you longer to stop.